Having a dinner party doesn't mean to say you have to start swinging from the chandelier, culinarily speaking. One of my celebratory regulars is loin of pork with bay leaves. It's simple, but it's elegant. And when it's finished cooking and it's carved and it's laid out to cover a huge plate, circled with bay leaves, it looks so wonderful and welcoming and abundant. And that's what I always want from food. What I'm really thinking about here is maximum flavour for minimum effort, useful when you're cooking for a lot of people, which is why I'm not even bothering to peel this onion, just slicing it. It's true, the skin will give a lovely golden colour to the gravy later. The real reason I'm not peeling it is just out of laziness rather than as to use it as a dye. This is going to go into the pan, but first some lovely garlic infused olive oil. You can use ordinary olive oil with garlic, but this is quicker and it means you don't get any burnt shards of garlic later. Now the onion, my floor of flavour and floor for the pork. On top of that, bay leaves. Lovely fresh bay leaves. Use dried if you can't get fresh. And then, this wonderful loin of pork on its little flavour platform. I asked the butcher to give me the bones he'd taken out and I'm plonking them here because they will give such a wonderful porky flavour to the gravy and also because I do like to make sure I get my cook's treat. Now the rub, which I love, and it's just more garlic infused olive oil, peppercorns and some dried bay leaves, just simply because it's easier to sort of crunch them down. Final touch, some salt, nice coarse salt, beautiful. And that's it, just in a moderately hot oven for about just under two hours. An hour and three quarters is when I'll look at it. This is perfect. Close the oven. It's just that wonderful golden burnish colour, which comes from, in part, these bones, and also because of the onion skin. Just take the meat and try and strain out these juices without causing major damage. every last bit of juice out of the onions. I think of this as gravy, but it's not normal gravy in that I'm not using flour to thicken it. All it is is those wonderful oniony pork juices, which I'm going to boil down, and 150 mils of water, and about the same amount of wine. But you don't have to be precise. You can't tell. Until I've tasted it, I can't tell what I need more of. Just hope I don't need less of anything. My special tasting spoon. And of course, by letting it boil for a bit, you can also reduce it and make it thicker and slightly more syrupy. Mm. Just while I'm waiting for the juices to reduce a bit more, a really spectacularly good part of the whole exercise Mmm. My spare ribs. Mmm. So delicious. Now for my salad. Parsley is the first and major ingredient, and I'm not using the parsley as a herb, but as the main ingredient. You know, I want bulk. Perfect. Second ingredient, red onion. Easiest way to fill that, just take the ends off. Cut in half, take off the skin. And just cut in half moons. Looks beautiful that way. Rain these down. 
And my third ingredient, capers. Really balance these two incredibly well. These have been packed in salt, which does make them really too salty. So I've been soaking them in water. Mm. You can use capers that have been stored in vinegar. They won't be as good as this, but if you can't find salted capers, do not worry. Lovely. These are salty enough. I'm not going to add any more salt. Olive oil. Mm. Lemon. Not much lemon. Like. Once you make this salad, you find you just find an excuse to make it over and over again. Not that you need an excuse. Pleasure is reason enough. Carving's not my strong point, so be kind. But what you want are lovely thin slices, which you then pile up in the centre of a huge plate. And then, although I don't normally go in for prinking, uh, what I do is a final Napoleonic flourish, which is a circle of bay leaves all around the piled up pork on the plate. It looks wonderful. A bit of gravy ladled on now will stop the meat drying out if it has to sit for a bit. And if it has to sit for a lot, then just tent it with some tin foil. And then the rest of the gravy you can keep in a sauce boat and people can just help themselves on the table. My granny's pears bella len. Poached pears, vanilla ice cream, and hot, thick, dark chocolate sauce. The pears just peeled, halved, and cored, and they're just poached in a vanilla syrup. And that is really just water, sugar, and a vanilla pod, nothing scary. This is the easiest chocolate sauce you could imagine. Just a couple of bars of chocolate, half a cup of sugar, I like to use instant espresso powder because you can just pour on the water and then sprinkle over the powder. Don't even have to reconstitute it. But of course use any instant coffee or indeed real coffee that you like. And then you just pour in the cream, stir again and that's it. This sauce is so good to have in your repertoire you can use it to zhuzh up any tub of bought ice cream. Right at the end, if you sprinkle over some finely chopped pistachios, it adds colour and wonderful crunch. So good, sweetheart. of the raw prawns, please. Thanks a lot. Some food has to be eaten the minute it's cooked. Now I know I act as if all food has to be eaten the minute it's cooked, but fried food cannot stand around. But if you cook fried food for lots of people, you end up feeling like the kitchen skivvy, getting hotter and hotter as you're doling out food for everyone to eat elsewhere. So I like to make these prawn cakes, and I've got a friend coming around, and I have got a friend coming around now. So you can eat them as they should be eaten, hot and straight out of the pan. And the thing about eating these prawn cakes, just the two of you as well, is that it feels like a stolen treat, which it is a bit. And for these prawn cakes, you need a clove of garlic, a couple of spring onions, just snipping them roughly before they're blitzed. Just like that. And then, and this is so easy, 250 grams 
of raw prawns. They'll have been frozen, but that's fine as long as they're thawed. I mean, the important thing is that they're raw. And 50 grams of flour. This is just to bind the cakes together when they fry. A splosh of sherry, and by splosh, it's a technical term, you understand. I mean a tablespoon or so, and blitz again. And that's your prawn cake batter made. Now, it's just a question of scraping this into a bowl and letting it wait for ten minutes as well, clear up or something, just to let the starch and the flour swell a bit. All, this will all help the prawns adhere into the cakes when you fry them. Right, I'm going to put these in the fridge. See you later. Do not try this if you're under five and at hand. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful. I love it when they turn color, change colour. How are we doing? Oh, there we are. And you know, I do think, I know this is just my excuse, but the fact that it's deep fat, it seals it, it isn't that greasy. Oh, it's, so fat, it's, it's not fattening at all. Fat. Yeah, low fat frying. Lovely. That one looks beautiful. Yum, yum, that yum. one has got my name on it, I think. Don't okay. Oh, that's delicious. Fried food is the nicest, isn't it? Yeah, in a very non-fat kind of way. No, I can feel this is making me lose weight as I eat it. Mm. I love the aromatic, unstructured qualities of stews and the way they look after themselves when you potter about the house at the weekend. This Greek lamb stew with pasta is one of my favourites. This is lamb shoulder, which is both cheaper and has a lot more flavour than leg. I'm using about two kilos of lamb here, which is enough to feed six to eight. That's the meat. And now the flavour base, which I think is the heart of a stew. Celery, to start. So important. Even if you don't like celery, please put some in. It adds a note that you cannot duplicate. Garlic for fat cloves. I want this to be really gutsy. Squish the cloves just to get the skin off. It's so important to distinguish between what takes a long time to cook and what takes a long time to prepare. Because sometimes you find that dishes which take ages to cook actually involve very little effort from you. Whereas some fast food thing can take 15 minutes of solid chopping. Anyway, onions. Lots. Time to blitz. Great. There's some oil left from browning the meat, so I don't need to add any more oil at this stage. So in the five minutes or so my vegetable base takes to cook, I'm going to start peeling the carrots, which will not take five minutes, even with my clumsy peeling. The thing is, I want the flavour of carrots, all that lovely sweetness, but what I do not want is little, little bits of chopped up carrots like school stew. So what I'm going to do is just bung them in and then retrieve them before serving the stew up. I know it sounds wasteful, but I promise you it isn't. You'll see. So that's done. And this is done. And by done, I mean Again, not coloured, just soft. Slightly translucent, but the celery adds a little greenness. Just taking half out. Spread the remaining bit of vegetable mishmash around at the bottom. Just pour the brown meat back over. It's like making a sandwich. Onion mush, meat. Onion mush, delicious. But the reason I'm doing this, I mean, you don't have to just mix all around the, uh, however you want. The reason I'm doing this is because I feel that the onion cooked down and pulverised a bit 
seems to keep the meat moister, more succulent. And I don't want a stringy stew. Carrots. So some bay leaves, because I've got the sweetness from the carrots and I want some nice herbal quality from bay leaves and, mm, lovely, oregano, so beautiful. With stews, really don't be too hung up on, you know, is it a teaspoon or is it half a teaspoon? Is it two bay leaves or is it three bay leaves? Three carrots or two carrots? None of it makes any difference and you'll feel so much more liberated if you just, you know, bung things in, you know, within reason. Now, tomatoes, and I've spent all day chopping these tomatoes and putting them into cans. Now the wine, whole bottle white, partly because when I ate a stew like this in Greece it was made with white wine, but also because it's nice to change flavours. White wine can be great with meat, just as red wine with fish. And water. It is very watery at this stage and do not get alarmed. The reason is some of the liquid will just evaporate on cooking, but also because since I'm going to be cooking some pasta with this when I reheat, I want the water there so I can cook the pasta and of course the pasta will absorb some of the liquid. Perfect, and it's come to a boil. Let it bubble for a minute. Mm. And now plonk a lid on, turn it right down. And leave it for a couple of hours. If, however, you want just to forget about it, not even see it in your kitchen, just bung it in a low oven. I mean, it doesn't make any difference. You're just applying low heat to this wonderful stew for two hours and it'll be cooked whichever way you do it. Fish these carrots out. But not throw them away. Bring it up to the boil. Throw in the pasta and this is what turns it into such a wonderful sort of one pot comfort meal. Mm. Macaroni. Okay, leave that to cook and my carrots. Some ligurian olive oil, more than salt. So delicious. Cook's treat. You always got to have one of those. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. That take about 10 minutes. So much in food depends on contrast and here against that sweet meaty lamb stew I'm chopping oregano, fresh oregano. I use dried in it. And then, I've got this chopped. I'm gonna crumble in with it some really sharp feta. Mix them, mix them together just for my hands, you know. And this sharp and herbal mix will just meld and melt into that sweet stew. Standbys. It's shoulder of lamb, which is to turn into a shredded warm lamb salad with mint and pomegranate. Let me just turn the oven on. Let me get ooh, the tin out. Turn on the heat. Right, so the lamb gets bunged into the pan to brown. Don't need to add any fat because it's got its own. Lovely. 
I mean, that's the wonderful thing about shoulder. It's cheaper than leg and not as lean. And I know everyone likes leanness now, but the point is the flavour is in the fat. So all the fat will seep through into the meat, leaving the flavour there, and then the fat just remains in the water I'm going to braise it in. While that's happening, I can do a bit of light chopping. So I've got four shallots here, but you could use a couple of onions. Just don't bother to peel them, just chop them in half. All I want here is for the flavour of these vegetables to go into the water the lamb's going to be cooked in. Likewise, these garlic cloves, no need to peel them, just press with the side of a knife so all their lovely, juicy flavour runs out. And then the carrot just gives wonderful sweetness. So that's... Now, let me just see, I think this is lovely and brown and ready to come out. And then just tumble the vegetables in the pan, in the fat that the lamb's rendered down, and just bobble them about a bit. And now this will both sizzle and smoke. Don't be alarmed. Add salt. Meat that's under salted is vile, so don't be timid. And then lamb back on, this time with the skin side up, foil on, and then the wonderful thing about this is it's been just a few minutes preparation and now it just gets whopped in the oven, cook it for five hours at a low heat, 12 to 15 hours at an incredibly low heat, whatever, it's in the oven and you just get on with the weekend. <laughs> I'm just going to get the port now to turn it over for its final glorious splitzing. Now, I find the easiest thing is to use gloves. Wow. That is just perfect. Very nice. And I've got another pair. So I'm just going to put this in now to get the crackling really crisp. And I'll put the potatoes in the oven to brown just as I take the pork out to rest. I just want the crackling off. Yeah, Eat as much as you want as you do it. It's perks. And then get the scratch out. With the oven so hot, I think about five, ten minutes, that's all. And then dive in. Look, crackling. Wow. Can I give you some? Yeah. Need another bite. You need another bite. Oh. I will actually. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, Bruno. Why don't you have that, darling? <laughs>